Good evening and welcome to Nilla South. Thank you for joining me today. This uh, episode is going to be about saving money. Uh, saving money basically by doing what your grandmother did. And so I kind of want to go through a few of the little things that we do that maybe are just a little bit different than when some people do. Um, and really, I have found that they save so much money. So I wanted to share these uh, with you guys. Uh, one of the things, and I'll kind of come down here a little bit so I can show you, is we bottle our own water. Um, we were going to the store so much, and it was just, there was so much waste. So we quit buying bottled water. Um, and I don't know if you've ever seen, like, any of those shows or documentaries where they just show in the ocean where all that is going. It's just, just didn't want to be part of the problem anymore and to be honest with you it's also just a lot easier i don't have to go to the store every other day and get water because everybody's you know my son plays baseball we we're active we go do things uh, we work and everybody was grabbing water and i would have to get home and have to go buy water every time i would save five six dollars um, at least so we started bottling our own water uh, these are the bottles I buy these at Hobby Lobby. I'll try to find this and link it in the description. Um, I do not buy them full price. So whenever Hobby Lobby runs their glassware, I think it's craft glass is what it's called. They'll have that 40 or sometimes 50% off. And I'll go get these. So they're normally, I think, around $5, like $4.99. And I'll go get them, and they're usually $2.50. Um, I usually keep, I would say, 15 of these. Uh, in the refrigerator and everybody just grabs one. It's just kind of our new habit and how we do things. I also have, we've been doing this for over a year and uh, it's just, it makes so much sense. So if you don't do this, think about doing it. Uh, we filter the tap water. I actually filter it twice to make sure that it's good, but I filter it through the refrigerator and then I put it through a Brita um, and I buy the more advanced filters for that and then we bottle it. This is my really big one. I think I got this one on sale at Hobby Lobby for like $1.49. It was on clearance. This is the one I'll often bring to work. Um, and it's so easy. We just grab a bottle. We're leaving the house. Everybody gets one. Same thing. Uh, I run them through the dishwasher to sanitize them, uh, take them out. I rinse them a little bit and do it all over again. So this is the pitcher we use. It's not even really that big, but um, it does the trick. You just, it'll keep refilling I put the water in there and then bottle all those I'll take all the bottles line them up on the counter and it takes no time at all and it really does save you a lot of money if you're buying bottled water and it's just a lot of waste it really is um, a lot of waste for our convenience and to be honest with you the little bit of work that you put into this the payout is so worth it and that's most of the things that I'm going to show you today uh, it does require like a little bit of work but once that you do that work, it's so very easy. Um, the other thing is a garden. If you don't have a garden, plant a garden. Um, and that, you know, just grow what you can. You can start really little, um, grow your own food. Uh, whenever it comes to that, and I'll show you a few other things that I do as far as really basically no waste. I try really hard. Um, nobody's going to have zero waste. You're always going to have waste of some type of food, but we really try very hard not to waste food. So for example, if I would cook a roast and maybe we don't eat all of that and we're, you know, the next day and I know that we're going to, we have something to do or we're not going to be eating that. I will always freeze that, um, and use that later. It could either be used like with rice and gravy or I'll make stuffed breads with it. But I just kind of always think of things um, whenever something could go to waste. I always think of how can we use that? How can we use that and have zero waste in that product? Um, gumbo, we're a family of three. So, and I love to cook gumbo, but a lot of times we will eat that a couple of days and then everyone is tired. So I'll put that in little mason jars and kind of like a serving to take to lunch with some rice or if we get home and we're having like a really bad night or we're tired um, I can just put those on a counter before we leave to go to baseball or whatever we're gonna do that night and whenever we get back it'll kind of be thawed warm it out warm it up and cook that and it just makes everything so much easier 
another thing with zero waste is if you have something that can regrow, um, regrow it. For example, uh, this is some green onions um, that I got. From the, these are from the grocery store um, because we just planted our garden. I'll show you what that looks like in a little bit. But I cut the green onions and I have those ready to use in a recipe and I'm letting this sit in this water and I will actually plant these um, with my other green onions. I'll plant them and I'll have a product a lot faster. So don't waste these. This is something that will regrow. Another thing is uh, celery. So I have some celery right here. I have a recipe in a little bit that I actually have to make with this celery. So I'll show you what I'll do to it. And that way I don't have to buy celery again. I'm going to have celery. It's just going to make. Okay. So I'm going to take this celery. Oh, I have my sink in the thing. Okay, so we'll take this celery and I'm going to cut it to the bottom. Okay, and we will be reusing this in a little bit. I'm going to use that in a chicken salad. Okay, and then this is what I'm left with. So I'll take this, and I'm going to take these little wooden skewers. You could use toothpicks too. Doesn't really matter. Poke this all around. Boom. Okay. Then I will set this in some water. I'm going to take some water and put this in the water. Okay, so this is actually going to support this. Oops. This is actually going to support this, and it's going to start to get some green leaves on top, and it'll uh, keep this um, going. But whenever those green leaves start coming up, I'm going to plant this in the ground and then this will grow more celery. So I just bought this one to show you kind of what this looks like, but you can just keep growing celery from this celery uh, until this growing season is over. So you don't have to buy celery over and over again. Okay, put that there. Okay. Another thing that I do um, to save money is, and I'll show you this. Oh, I used all of it. Sorry, I can't show you that. We do not buy bread, so I make our bread, um, and so we do not buy bread at all. I always have bread in the refrigerator or on the counter. Because it is homemade, it's not going to last as long, so um, I have to make some tonight because we just use the last of the bread. I don't waste any bread either, so I've been experimenting with sourdough. This is my starter. It's so precious. I've worked so hard for this. Um, so this is one of the things that I'll make bread out of, but I also just make regular yeast bread. Now I'll tell you this, because I'm new to sourdough, and if anybody has any tips for me, please tell me in the description. It's really kind of hard to get used to it. But um, one of the things with the sourdough is sometimes it comes out like it's not as fluffy as my other bread. Um, it sometimes is a little more gummy. I haven't really gotten the process of sourdough yet. Uh, all the way down. I haven't mastered it. But for example, I had made one and it was just maybe not perfect. It was a little more gummy than I would have liked. Um, but what I did today, and, I, and the bottom was kind of, it wasn't burned, but it was you know almost burned at the bottom. Uh, so what I did was I cut that off and I made slices of bread this morning and I made sourdough breakfast sandwiches and I kind of made them like what you would get at Starbucks. I forgot what they call it, but it's on sourdough and it's got like the thick bacon and egg and cheese. So I grilled the sourdough bread and added those things to it and did it almost like a grilled cheese. And it was delicious. And we didn't waste that bread. Um, and then another thing that I'll do, like if my bread is about to go bad, there's two things. Don't waste, never waste bread. Like if your bread is about to go bad, do not waste it. Either if you put a bread, if you put a homemade bread in the refrigerator like a day or two after you make it and cut from there and just warm it up, it's going to last you a really long time. If you leave it on the counter because it doesn't have all those preservatives um, and the things that really you don't want, um, but it's going to start going bad because it's fresh. It's a fresh bread. 
So what I'll do with that is make uh, breadcrumbs. So I'll put that in the blender or mixer, mix it up, throw it in a Ziploc bag, and then the next time that I make meatloaf or meatballs or any of those things, I don't have to go buy bread breadcrumbs. They're like three dollars to buy breadcrumbs. So I don't. I just use the bread that I was going to waste. Or another thing that I'll do is I'll make um, croutons. So you take that out, you put it on a low heat um, in the oven. I want to say like 225 and then you leave it a while and let it kind of dry out. So take the bread, cut it in squares, cut it little, whatever size crouton that you want, you do you. So get your, get your crouton how you like it, that size. And you can take just some olive oil, a little bit of garlic powder, a little onion powder, a little seasoning, if it's a parsley, whatever you would want on your croutons and your salad, take that, spread it out on a sheet, put you a piece of, um, parchment paper and bake that really on a low, slow heat. I want to say around 225. I can't remember what I do. I don't have to look it up, but bake that and eat that on your salads because it's going to keep, once you do that, it's going to dry it out and that'll make you those croutons. They'll be delicious and you don't waste anything. So not wasting anything is one of the biggest um, changes that we've made since the economy. Um, and the price of groceries, uh, we don't, we just don't waste things. We, we save things. We don't waste things. If it's bacon, if we have bacon left over, I will take that little tiny bit of bacon and I'll put it in a little glass container, put it in the refrigerator. And then we will use that either on a salad or if I make an omelet, um, if bananas are about to go bad, I have about 18 bananas right now in the fridge. Everybody about to get banana bread. But anyway, I have a lot of bananas in the freezer. If bananas are about to go bad, Freeze those bananas, throw them in the freezer, just like they are, and they, that'll make an awesome banana bread. Um, or if they're not like really, really bad, but it's getting close, take them, take them out of the peeling, um, put them like in a bag, freeze them like a banana, and you can use them in smoothies. The, the older a banana is, the sweeter kind of it gets before you go rotten, though. You don't want to go rotten, but bananas get really good and really sweet. Let me see if I miss anything. Um, and cook it, do what your grandma did, basically. Cook at home, stay at home. Um, I think the, the price at restaurants is just, and that's the price of materials. Like a lot of people just cannot go out. A lot of people have changed their ways, but we really do a lot of stuff at home um, more than we ever have before. Um, and I think it's just, that is the adjustment that we have made kind of to even out with the economy in the price of groceries because groceries are just so high. So we try not to waste anything. I don't even waste like whenever I do my discord on the sourdough, I make pancakes out of it. Um, so I try to always, you know, use things to the best of my ability to, ha to not have waste. And there's usually a way to use things. Um, another thing is I go to Sam's. So going to Sam's or going to Costco, that's amazing. But just make sure with that not wasting message, make sure that you use it or that you freeze it or that you do something with it before it goes bad. If you buy like a really huge something. Um, so as I said, we have a family of three. I always buy that big bag of peeled garlic. Like that's one of the things that I buy at Sam's. And I'll tell you what I do, and this makes like dinner so easy, is I take um, those and I have, show you my little mold. I have this little mold right here. And it looks like this. And this isn't even hot when it goes in it. So I don't really mess with silicone too much. I'm more like glass because of toxins and stuff like that. But anyway, I have this. And I will take uh, that peeled garlic and I put it into a blender. And then I fill the rest of it up with olive oil, okay? So you want your olive oil to pretty much go, I would say, very close to where the garlic is. So like whatever height, so if you stack that blender, you know, five inches high, you're gonna wanna fill in the rest with some olive oil, okay? And then that garlic is so cheap and it lasts forever. Um, but what I do is I mix it with olive oil, I blend it, and then I make these. 
these are little, this is olive oil and garlic. And so whenever I'm cooking, I don't have to mince, I don't have to mince up um, garlic. It's already done for me. It's just a little cheap step and it really helps on week nights. Um, I do this too, because I always buy the big packs of bell peppers there, but we, if I don't do something with those bell peppers, they get waste, like they're just waste. So I quit uh, wasting anything. And now I'll take those bell peppers and I dice them and freeze them. I do this with onions as well. I have one of those choppers. I'll link it in the description. It makes it really easy. And so if I come home and I have six or 12 bell peppers, I, I dice them all except maybe one or two because we'll use those on pizzas. But this is a little, um, I work outside of the home and when I get home, I'm really sometimes just tired. And if I have to cook, uh, I'll already have my onions. I'll already have my bell peppers. I'll already have my garlic. So I just can take that ground meat, throw that in there, make a spaghetti sauce like really, really fast and boom dinner it happens super fast just because i do all of this in advance and i do it all at one time so it's really not that bad another thing that i do is i freeze i freeze so many things so yogurt we buy our yogurt like at sam's because it's so much cheaper this is the, what is this your play your play okay i just want to show you what we buy so we buy this, but we would waste some because I would put them in the refrigerator and you know how it is, like everybody wants to eat it at first and then everybody just kind of gets sick of it or we'll make smoothies or whatever and then it would go to waste. So what I do now is I'll put a row out at a time, I freeze the rest and then I take it out um, once that they've eaten the stack before. So that way we're not wasting. I freeze, I freeze everything. I really do. I freeze a lot of stuff. I freeze my butter, so I also get butter at, um, let's see, this is Members Mark Sam's, and I'll usually keep one of each, like one unsalted, one salted uh, out, but I freeze butter, and um, it doesn't go bad. It'll stay in there for a really long time. Um, another thing that I do is whenever I make cookie dough. So a lot of times, well, first of all, we don't buy the store-bought stuff. It's got, read the ingredients and you wouldn't buy it anymore. Um, I make our own cookie dough all the time. But the thing that you can do that's really convenient is do it like all at once. Like if you're gonna make a batch of cookies, you might as well make two batches or three batches because it's just, you already have everything dirty and everything out. So just make them, throw it in the mixer. And what I do with that, See what these are these are cranberry white chocolate walnut cookies and i will make my own rolls of cookie dough with excess and then if i have company or whatever i just pull one of these out and bake it and this will last like it's really good in the refrigerator for about six months um and it's an easy way like if you're at the church and people are like hey we're gonna come by you already have something done. And so just do what your grandma did. Just make them by hand. It's so much cheaper and it doesn't have all that crud in it. Um, and if you do a lot at one time, it saves you so much. Okay. And also produce. Produce. So don't waste that either. So I talked about bananas, but like I just went to Sam's. I bought a big bag of lemons. Probably not going to be able to eat the amount of lemons that I bought, but what I'll do is I will freeze uh, these lemons. Like I'll take the juice, I'll juice them whenever before I, they start going bad. So we'll use, I'll leave them out about a week and then I'll start taking them and juice them and freeze them like in ice trays. And then that way, anytime, if I have a recipe that calls for lemons, I have lemons and I didn't waste those lemons. So that's, I just try not to waste anything anything at all uh apples if you or if your apples will start going to bat take those slice them either make an apple pie filling ahead of time and then freeze it which i've done and it is so easy you just take it you do the whole apple pie filling and then you freeze it like in a ziploc bag or container glass whatever your preference is and then if you are having company or you're having a dinner party or something all you need is 
a pie crust and you just pour that in there and bake it and you didn't waste those apples. So uh, really the goal is zero waste. I think that that is it. I'm also going to do, which I'm going to show you the garden and some things that we just do ourselves uh, that save like a ton of money. Um, and so that is also what your grandma did. We just do it ourselves. Um, we don't have a guy for stuff. We do a lot of stuff ourselves. So, um, and we both work. I, it, it's hard to say like you, you don't have time because really the stuff, it takes the same amount of time. It's just your, your, your future self will thank you. Like later you're going to thank yourself. Like, I'm so glad I made all that ahead of time. I'm so glad I did those things. I'm so glad I froze this. Like whenever I make a stuffed bread and I'm able to just get some roast out of the freezer, dice it up and stuff that bread with cheese and uh, butter and that roast, it, it looks like it was something really hard to do, but it really wasn't. It was easy. Um, so I think that is it. Oh, and make your own coffee. I love coffee. I'll just start, but I'll just, I don't know, just throw on the brakes for Starbucks. But I have really tried um, to make that like a treat. Um, we bought the nice coffee pot with the shh. I just do it myself. And so there's just something special about that too, um, to do it at home. But coffee is ridiculously expensive. Um, so that's just a treat. I do it sometimes, not all the time. Okay, I think that is it for the things that I can think of. Um, and then I'm going to show you now just some house things that we do ourselves because it's just easy. Um, one of those things is um, like if you really want something, think about can you make it? Like is it possible for me to just make the thing? Um, is it really that hard? So there was a, I'm going to have to take this off to be able to bring you over with me. But there was, ooh, so there was this painting that I really wanted, um, and it was, oh, I don't know how to do this. I'm not much selfie in. So anyway, it was a, like, the Lord's Supper, but it was very expensive, and I wanted one that kind of looked like a child did, and they call it, that's a certain kind of art. If you know what it is, please comment it, but it's a certain kind of art that looks really childlike. So... I went online and I looked at what I really wanted. The one that I wanted was like 300 something dollars. So I just was like, okay. So I went to the dollar store and I bought, I got um, a canvas and some paint. I might have spent $5. I think my son did a painting too, maybe $6. I don't know, it wasn't much. And I'll show you kind of what I ended up doing. Um, and I wanted it to look childlike. So. This was it, and so this is my Lord's Supper. And then what I did with that, and I absolutely love it. I know it's kind of like babyish, but I really love it, and it's what I wanted. That's the piece I wanted for my kitchen. And then, so then, I kind of really wanted that for, <laughs> excuse me, I really wanted that up in my dining room. So I'm gonna walk, and I'm gonna show you, um, I took that painting that I already did and then I blew it, I had it printed like on a really big canvas, turn on this dining room light, okay, and so then this is, this is that, okay, and y'all, it is so similar to what I saw, and it, you know, I spent, I want to say to have it printed on here, it might have been, it was like on a sale, it was like half off or something. So it might've been $45 or something versus 300. So if you have, I mean, not everybody has that particular talent, but if you have a talent, um, use it. I don't really have a talent, but I was able to do that. Um, pantry, I try to keep the pantry stocked. Ooh, I'll show you, pantry's messy, but try to keep like flour and you know, all the things to be able to make things like from scratch. Like I have those on hand. Sorry guys. Okay, I have those on hand all the time. Okay, now I'm gonna walk you out to the garden. And 
show you a few things out here that we do to save money. And I don't know if you garden, this is like all of this world is very new to me. Um, but it's really to like kind of move towards a sustainable lifestyle where we're able to just do things ourselves as much as possible. Okay, now we don't have much yet. So, well, so this is, we have some little things. We have potatoes some things coming up so excited about this like no way to even express how excited I am about just being able to come out here and get fresh ingredients okay another awesome thing to do like in these times or whatever with the economy is if um, if you have really good neighbors and maybe you have something to barter with them, like an excess of vegetables where they have chickens and they could give you fresh eggs or whatever. I have a neighbor that um, is awesome. Miss Tracy, thank you. She always brings me fresh eggs um, and I'm very appreciative for that. So that's just another um, idea of basically this, I would call this just do what your grandma did. Just do what your grandma did and you're gonna eat better. And, uh, your kids will have better ingredients You'll be able to say the name of what's in their food. Um, and it's just fun to just stay home. And I think after, you know, the pandemic and everything with the economy, I really think that that is one of the biggest things for me is I enjoy the fact that I, want to, I wanted to slow down after that. I just wanted to slow down and enjoy my family and be with my family and be home and enjoy doing things this the simple way and the way that my grandmother did it and um there's just something about that that you know we blow we we go 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 and we got to go here got to go here um there's something about just being home and the simple things just making us happy so anyway thank you so much for joining me this evening um I have truly enjoyed sharing all of these things with you. If anything that I said helps you, um, please comment or let me know. Or if you have any tips and tricks that could help me, I would greatly appreciate it. Okay? Thank you, and I hope you all have a good evening.